Hello pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil. Joining me today for a TTS game in which he actually had the chance to participate as well, we have... James, here representing the Resistance. I mean, if we're going to have anyone representing the Resistance, you are pretty much our go-to, to be honest. Yeah, so, I don't think Nautilus play more resistance than even the Rebels, so... I don't blame you. They're actually... I feel they're quite a strong faction. There are some really good builds that you can do in there. And uh, resistance have been causing me a lot of grief recently. I'll have, you know, err. But I do <laughs> like them. They are really cool. Um, but yeah, so we have a new pilot on the board as well. We have Sam, and he's going to be flying scum for us today. As I said, doing this on TTS because James lives too far away for petrol to allow him just to pop round and have a game. Yeah, that, that is... hyperspace fuel is expensive. Yep, and uh, there's no good hyperspace lady can't do it in 12 parsecs. But let's run down the list. So I'll go through Sam's. We have three IG-88s on the board. We have B, D and C pretty much one of the same things so b and c have got elusive fire control system heavy laser cannon jamming beam because it's free why not seismic charts contraband cybernetics tactical scrambler and the ig2000 ig88d has dead eye shot fire control system heavy laser cannon jamming beam seismic charges contraband cybernetics and the ig2000 title so running very similar builds there, which is not unexpected yeah, a few for those. Little tweaks here and there just to sort of fill out the points appropriately. Pretty much, yeah. And uh what manner of cruelty did you bring to the board? Uh I brought the well, I don't know if it's the one, but a resistance sort of alpha strike list. So I've got Ray in the Falcon with Heroic, Rose Tico Crew, Finn Gunner, a Dead Man Switch, an Engine Upgrade, and the title. I've also got Poe Dameron, that's the uh, trigger-happy flyboy version of Poe, with Heroic, R4 Astromech, Ferrosphere Paint, some Proton Torpedoes, the Overdrive Thruster, a Munitions Failsafe, Integrated s foils, the Black One title, and the Free Jamming Beam. And then with the rest of my points, I brought along Zori Bliss with the free uh, belly run ability, the R4 Astromech, the wartime loadout, and proton torpedoes of her own. Nice. God, when you were going through what you can stack on that T70, it's just impressive. Every single upgrade slot is filled and three of them are free upgrades. The uh, the S foils are free, the jamming beam is free, and the black run title are free. Yeah. I do like the fact that config titles are free now. And a lot of the actual titles as well, they don't tend to I think some of, I have to go back and look. I don't think many of them actually cost anything. I think the most surprising one is yeah, I think Crow. They've now just limited it to the pilots that can take it and like adjusted the pilots accordingly i think yeah i think that is more the case because you'll you'll see say black one can only be used on poe moldy crow there's very few pilots that can take that now but one thing that i've actually seen more of recently which i'm actually finding quite an interesting but also annoying upgrade ferrosphere paint Yes, there's there's so many abilities at the moment that either get target locks, spend target locks, just just target lock in general, and having like forcing it to be basically a red move for the opponent if you're not in their bullseye, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It, I came across that the other day. Five resistance ships, all with ferrosphere paint, and I'm not going to lie, it hurt. I I just didn't bother target locking all game. That's unfortunate there. Yeah, so C. turn to Sam, put which one is that? IGC onto that one little rock, took a damage yeah. for going on the rock, and then rolled another damage. The worst bit is um, we were doing the overlay as we were playing this, and uh, what had happened was 
you can just about see behind the ships. The dials are red, yellow, green, but the ships are red, green, yellow. So it's a classic one of those. Happen, it happens more yeah, when you, you play you've TCS. you coordinated to, be, to try and be as sure as you can, and then, whoops. Yeah, easily done. Obviously, TTS, you don't exactly... It's, it's not really efficient to put the dial next to the ship, whereas you, in real life, I always put my dials as close to the ship as possible. That way, I'm, I'm sure it's the right dial. I still make mistakes. Um, it's easily done, so a bit unfortunate there for Sam, because uh, there's some big, meaty ships coming in there. There is. Um, I did kind of line up for the joust. I mean, I knew where all of the IGs were at the start of the game before I set up my ships. And, you know, there's two up here. If I line up near the top of the board, I'm going to get at least one of them, probably with some proton torpedoes. And now IGC is, has landed on a rock and is in range of all three of my ships. Yeah, IGC is a bit beached there, unfortunately. And, you know, it's it's going to be two fully modded proton torps and Ray with the extra fin die. Yeah, especially with Zori's ability. Which... Yeah, I mean, Poe po and Zori, like if you fly resistance and you haven't flown trigger happy Poe next to Zori, give it a try. Zori goes forward, takes a focus. Poe flies up next to her, takes a focus uses his ability to take a target lock and then Zori uses her ability to copy the target lock and then they both got a fully modded attack. Yeah, it's utter brutality and especially when you've got that on an i6 and an i5. Yeah. That, that You're just almost guaranteed to PS kill something there. Uh, optimistic there with four dice, Sam. Yeah, that's right. Missiles and torpedoes. Yeah, that's the added bonus of the proton torpedoes. The uh, yeah. the most recent point changes does mean the Zori doesn't have a um, a turret. She did use to in my earlier build of this. Yeah, but when uh, you've got when you've got this potential, you're you're almost okay losing the turret there. Yeah, also with the water loadout, you can just disengage and reload and come back around with more torpedoes. Yeah, I love wartime loadout. It's, it's almost a little bit disappointing that uh, the points went up on that. I see the reason why it is yeah, I mean, very it's, it's it's two very shield good. upgrades for 10 points, and currently a hull upgrade is what? Six. Six, is it? Uh, actually, well, hull upgrades banned anyway in standard so it oh, doesn't matter oh, shield, shield upgrade is eight so for two more points than a regular shield upgrade you get two and the option to reload and have torpedoes and a and a white target lock action as well yeah it really helps the action bar on the resistance way which i think is something that does limit it but even without the water road out there's some really cool things you can do with upgrades and how that works like adding targeting computer adding engine upgrade just some really clever stuff you can do yeah and there's that why we have some fun stuff um that so this, this is close torpedo into c and i think that was a direct hit that, that was a direct hit okay yeah. I, I remembered one one came up at some point yeah that's already a painful shot there into c you know, and then Zori's sitting there with the target lock as well. Might as well take that shot too. Yeah. And just while I went to the shot, uh, just to clarify, we were doing um, Assault the Satellites, I believe was oh, the yes. one. Should uh, clarify. So that's the one where you have to be at range, range one, I think, was it? Uh, Ranger is the one of the objective to score it. Um, just going like into this, this I, I was... I was thinking like, well, I've got one large ship and two small, but the IGs are all medium-based ships. They they count as two, so yeah, I'm at a disadvantage in terms of the objectives. So I I kind of need to go for the kills, which you've just done, and that's a, a hit and two crits going through onto C. Yeah, I mean, I it was, was expecting to have to use. The shot from right. Ray to finish it, but the uh, the little bit of damage from landing on that rock. Yeah, 
and it, potentially you know not having um any kind of tokens, tokens yeah just it, meant it that was, those two torpedoes did the job yeah it was very unfortunate there for sam and again one of those things that does happen and i know that many of us have had that happen before we kick ourselves at the time but it's something to learn from oh, yeah, um, I've, and, I've had a game with this very list and ray has landed on i think well two individual rocks but like three times in total and she only shot once that game and then died wow actually no i don't think she died the, the opponent just won an objectives yeah ray wasn't shooting and it's something I do think is quite good about what I'm liking about the most recent version of 2.5, however you want to term it, 2.6, 2.5.1, whatever. Um, we've said it before, but the objectives aren't the be-all and end-all. They're just like that little bit of extra spice in there. You can go for objectives or you can still just go for kills. And yeah, so that's far, exactly what my my list here is designed to do. It's like you know, if I can get objectives as well, I'll you know I'll grab them where I can. But I'm I'm here to blow stuff up. Yeah, and, uh, and Ray so is far, what Ray is doing so far doing quite well. Spending that thin die to to use Rose to get the tire lock to get the tire lock to re-roll to then spend the focus. It's so efficient. Yeah. Oh, and there there is not a bad roll there. Gonna spend a lucid. Interesting. Actually, became a worse result. So, ha having to spend one of the calculates could have spent both to say that, but evidently wanting one of those calculates at least for attack, which I don't blame. Sam. Also, you if you're planning ahead, which I mean, maybe spoilers here, but um, if you know you're going to do a red maneuver anyway, give it a try. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and D, yeah, just had uh, had poem range. Yeah, nice little cheeky shot from D there. Yeah, I, I think Sam's fallen into the trap of thinking of going straight in with two of those, and obviously landed on the rock with C was not great. But I, I think if you come up against this list, don't try and joust it unless you've no, got something don't, even, don't even more unless, jousting. Unless you have. An incredibly it's, strong joust as well, and you want to just go. You know what? Let's see who's got the best joust. Yeah, I mean, um, if you're running this list, Ho, but he has the best ability of heroic. And I mean, if you're going to trigger heroic on three blanks, is the best time to trigger heroic. I think I was saying to Sam, like whilst we were recording, um, I have had to use heroic on four red dice once. That is impressive it and I'm, i don't remember it rolling into anything good but just the fact that i got to shout heroic for, for four dice i mean i'm assuming good. i'm assuming that it wasn't the normal shout of heroic it was a very enthusiastic shout but it, of it heroic. was also the case of it was like version one and it was lulo in the a-wing right oh, no. uh, version, two. Ver version two but lulo in the a-wing so he yeah it's like a four die attack from an A wing. Crazy. Anyway. Yeah. That's a really nice shot there from B into Ray. Yep. Spending the blank there to get the target lock. Again. Yeah, Ray, why Ray's not? Crew. I mean nine oh. points, but you get you get target locks so freely. I mean the combination you have there with Rose and Finn on Ray is just incredible um obviously you don't have uh corsella on there which is the no, other one so you this, would normally this see kind of sacrifices corsella who's the crew that lets you clear all of your stress on doing a blue maneuver yep in order Ridiculous. to take a engine upgrade heroic and dead man switch now the dead man switch is yeah you can probably maybe take a force power or a crew instead but heroic is actually yeah. really good for defense like you get the one die okay you roll that you get a blank if they're in your front arc you add finn's blank and then you can just re-roll both which is impressive it it's it's one of those things where 
when building a list, you look that little bit further into it, and as soon as you see it, you go, wow, that is obvious, that is really handy and really good, but so easily missed, I feel. Like, that, that just little combinations like that, that can be easily missed. When you see it, you're like, yep. Yeah. It's like Ferris Fear Paint. I think when you played this against that was one of the first times I saw Ferris Fear Paint, and then I saw it last week down in store, and I was just like, oh, yeah, that's okay. That's an annoying upgrade. I like it. It also then, actually works pretty well against Ray. It would do, wouldn't it? Yes, because obviously... It kind of just shuts down Rose crew, unless they also have Corsetta on board, I guess. Yeah, but it's only it's resistance only, isn't it? Yes, heroic is the the resistance. Um, no, um, Ferris fear paint. Sorry. Sorry. Well, both. I think. Yeah. I'm gonna double check that but again. It's not something I use very often. I know. Does it fit in the tech slot? It is a tech upgrade. Yeah. So you could have it on an A wing. Yes, you can have it. On a, like I said, I saw it on two A wings, two Y wings, and an X wing, and it is resistance only. So Wait, they all had it. They all had it. That's a lot of pain. Yeah, I mean, they were just like, yep, yeah, I, I can't target lock it painted, can't target lock a painted chip. And until I saw what was there, like they were saying, I was like, what do you mean the painted chip? And then I sort of went, oh, oh, right. So that sloop, I want to point out, if you go back and look at setup, if you have a large base ship and have it range one from the board edge, Ray can always do that sloop. I, I like to give it a little bit of wiggle room just to be sure, but it's a good way to know, yeah, I've got enough room to do the sloop. Always great, great tips. I mean, that's why practicing with lists sometimes is quite good and sticking with them. Um, and it's really handy to know that. If you know that you're likely to do specific moves. Yeah, just get out the board or, you know, a smaller version of the board. Enough room that you need to. And just, yeah. just work out the moves if you really want. I mean, I've done it for a couple of tournaments um, back in the day when I was running my uh, three V19s, the LA80 and Obi-1. I had I practiced my, my early formation flying with it. And every time I did right, it... Right, because they're different size bases. Yeah, so I'd have the V19s to the left and the LA80 in the, in the bottom corner. And I'd know how to move those V19s to bank across, then bank up so that they were then in front of the LA80 as a shield, benefiting from the LA80's ability. And then Obi-Wan just did whatever Obi-Wan did because he was in a Delta 7B before they made it really expensive and it was just super fast. But like I practiced that and I was actually really, I felt really proud when I was able to pull it off. And especially when people looked to go, why are you flying off the board? I'm like, I'm not, I know what I'm doing for a change. Also, barrel rolling a Y wing is fun. Yeah, I've, I've talked a lot about my list. I do want to say, triple YGs is so cool. Like it's an awesome looking ship, and the, you don't need nearly as much synergy in the upgrades as I've got. You just go, cool. Mm. I want this guy's ability, this guy's ability, and this guy's ability, and just just go with it. Yeah, I mean, it is a cool list, and the fact that you can fit three IGs in. I mean, Actually, we do, all... you, do you have Sam's list at I, hand? I do. Do you, do you want to run down what um, B, C and D do? Absolutely. So firstly, all three of them have the advanced droid brain. So after you perform a calculate action, gain one calculate token. Incredible in itself. Yeah. Um, but they have the IG-2000 title upgrade. Uh, which means you have the pilot ability of each other friendly ship with the IG-2000 upgrade. So all three ships, until one of them dies, or both of them, have from B, after you perform an attack that misses, you may perform a bonus cannon attack. You've got a heavy laser cannon and a jabbing beam on there. That's really handy. C, was providing at the time, after you perform a boost action, you may perform an evade action. And D has, while you execute a Segnor's loop, you may use another template at the same speed, either the hard or the straight template. So essentially, 
turning a Segwell's loop into a off-kilter talent roll or a K-turn. I mean, they're all good abilities and having yeah. basically three pilot abilities is so good. Absolutely. It, it is really cool. And again, you obviously, you've got to be careful which ones you take because you'll always need to have D in there because A, B, and C are all seven points. So if you want to take three, D has to be in there. But I like B, C, and D together. So I, I like I like Sam's choice there. Um, I have seen another... There is one, uh, an upcoming tour, well, the tournament we had over the weekend where someone else took three IGs as well. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I love IGs. I'd love to I'd love to run it in real life, but I've got three ships, but only two dials. Oh, from the conversion. Right. Yeah. I'm curious as to when they re-release the IGs, will they do it as a dual pack? I feel like they might. I mean, it's kind of the whole point of them, really. Yeah. It, it makes sense for them. It would be a, one of the more expensive dual packs. You'd be looking at probably 50 to 60 pounds because it is two medium-based ships. I mean, but, some of the other packs we've had have been three small ships, though. It's kind of the same. Yeah. I, I think it would be a good idea. And I, I actually quite like the multi-packs. I think it's a really good, especially for ships that you are going to want to have more than one of. They are absolutely brilliant. I mean, the Clone Z95s, multi-pack for that, great. Love that. And the Rogue class, absolutely spot on. I, yeah, I this, don't this like is a big hit that. coming from Ray. Range one gives her four dice. She's already, already has got the, the target from lock. last turn from defending. Doesn't you spend take, stress. I'm pretty sure Sam's happy for you to take that stress, but wow. And then spend the lock from previously with the fin die to reroll the three blanks into that, and then Ray's ability front arc spend a force to change one result to a hit that's and that is gonna do some at least at, at, least, at two. least two damage minimum that is raise uh, scary you uh, don't want to be range one in front of her well, you don't really uh, want to be in front of her anyway but you yeah. don't want to be range one in front of her and she's only eight points yes um, again rose finn Raise Millennium Falcon title, which is just it allows you to do the sloop, then you can do a boost and rotate whilst yeah, you have so less than one the title stress. Is, if you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can execute a red signals loop maneuver and perform boost and rotate gun actions even more stressed. Mm -hmm. which makes the engine upgrade really good because that's no longer a red action so you're not taking even more stress when doing that again the fact that you can fit something like that in and I mean I, th I think we've spoken about Ray a lot but then Poe like what he's got as well I mean you haven't even got a BB astromech on Poe You've got the R4, which I love. I, R4. I really like BB-8. Like he's one of my favorite characters now in Star Wars. But the R4 Ashramic is just so good and significantly cheaper. Oh yeah, like the two R4 points, Ashramic if is I remember two right. points, and BB-8 is seven. Eight. Seven. Oh, he's come down a bit. BB-8 is now system phase, so it's yes. a bit less. You, oh, you no, can't less useful, but it's, it's less potent, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's a good shot there from D on to Zori. Finally putting some damage out there. Yeah. Those Y wings, though, they they are tough, Enjoy especially out. with with wartime loadout on. They are really tough. When you haven't got it on, they're not as beefy. But I still really like them. That's. A middling roll there from B into Ray. Hoping for something a bit better there, I think. Got one. Do you force the other one? I don't remember if I do, actually. <laughs> you do force it. I do, which, okay. Which... I think the, uh, the debate was, do I spend it to use Rose for a target lock? Yeah. 
but I think I figured, well, I've got Rose Crew anyway, I can always use it on the thin blank and being healthy seems more important. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does trigger B's ability. Yes. Which so, means you're then getting a HLC to the well, I to would the base. Be, but isn't the HLC is that what we bullseye at this point? So it's bullseye arc only, and a uh, ray is in the bullseye. So unless there's the range on it as yeah, well, yeah, it's range two, range to, two three. to three. The, I remember the dice came yeah. out ready to do it, and then Sam points out, "Oh no, I can't do it because it's range two to three. That is one of the most upsetting things. Maybe that's ever. a change to make to this to to maybe get more use out of that double tap. Yeah. So you take a different cannon. There's quite a few things that I myself would potentially look what, at changing. What cannons are one to three? It's kind of just the ion cannon, really, unless you want to take a uh, track to be more the jamming. We got the ion cannon, or we got the auto blaster one to two, but that's obviously very expensive. And you'd have to. Oh, so yeah. This is the other thing about this game, actually. I'm flying a standard list. And Sam is flying extended, so I'm currently yeah. like checking upgrades on my standard thing. That's why that didn't show up. Yeah, IGs don't come under standard because they've not been re-released or have any version of them out. Um, obviously, we did our faction breakdown for the Empire the other day, um, go through their standard list, and um, we are in the process of getting together for the other factions as well. When I was looking at the Rebels, I didn't realise that basically everything for Rebels is standard, except I think it was the Orzatuck, K-Wing, E-Wing, and YT-2400. Everything else is standard. The um, Ray's title, just being able to just go, I'll just go back where I was. Yeah. In action there, that old ability. Also, so sneaky, just about missing Zori there as well, which was quite handy. Yeah, I think I remember sort of debating which one of these two to move. I thought potentially if I move Zori first, Ray would bump and not go back to where she was. So I obviously do Ray first, but actually it did end up being quite close anyway. Yeah, it was incredibly close. And is oh, that I think, I think this is the point wings. where I, I may have realised that... Um, actually, no, it might be a little later. At some point, you see me flipping the token and the wings on Poe open and close, and I don't know who made the mod for TTS, but that level of detail is amazing. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. I think we basically went... We, we did what everyone did when they first got the 2.0x wings and went... Open, close, open, close, open, close. Same thing we did with the B-Wings, uh, the Sith Infiltrator for me, even with the Lambda in 1.0, the fact that the wings opened and closed on that was just, I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. So my plan for this little bit was um, do a barrel roll with Poe and use Zori's ability to copy the barrel roll to then get a range one shot on red. But... She was just out of range of Poe, and I couldn't pull it off. Yeah. Uh, I do want to highlight that that's the sort of stuff you can do. It's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. Also, the IGs ended up being really good against Zori, because Zori can only copy abilities on her um, action bar. And the IGs were mostly just taking calculates, and she doesn't have that. Yeah. So she, can't, she can't copy it. Absolutely. It, it is... Calculate is an interesting one. I like it. It's pretty handy. Having two is interesting, because whilst, you yeah. know, if you roll a bunch of focuses, you're in trouble, you can maybe spend one on defence and one on attack, and that, I feel yeah. like, works out better on average, maybe. It, it's almost like the absolute budget Perceptor Copilot. Yeah. Because I, 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 lo I love Perceptor Copilot. I think that's such a good upgrade card, and there's there's certain ships which when I fly I almost always have Perceptor Copilot and K-Wings are actually one of them. I almost always take Perceptor Copilot on okay. K-Wings um, because 
they only have one of eight dice. So, like, you're generally going to be getting shot at, like, first. So you've got that just in case. But I like to run barrage rockets on them as well, and they use focuses. So you're always guaranteeing that you're going to have that focus for barrage rockets. Yeah, fair enough. And like I said, I love the K-Wing. Like, a lot, I know there's some people, Fergus, who don't like the K-Wing. But I think it's a really cool ship. <laughs> not I calling anyone out in particular, though. No, not calling anyone out, Fergus. So, yeah, Zori <laughs> took her shot, just missed. Well, rolled a crit, but uh, IGB was fine. But Ray is once again unloading. Yeah. Not the best roll. No. I'm curious, this Ray build, is this the Ray frustrated during her training and taking it out on everything else build? because it just is very, very uh, I guess if Finn and Rose are on board, then it would be, like, at least after Last Jedi. Yeah. But then Poe is in Black One, so... I don't know, timeline's gone weird. Yeah. I do... What, it's something I do like about X-Wing. Sometimes you have some ships up against each other, and you're like, this would never have happened in the timeline, but we're going to do it anyway. Like, suddenly you have Anakin versus Kylo. Or Anakin, like, young Anakin versus Vader. Yeah. They're always fun fights as well on the board because, like, those ships are really good. Like, I actually kind of... I really want to see a one-on-one with Anakin in the Eta 2 versus Vader... I want to say the X1 because I think the Defender would be a bit too much. But yeah, Vader in the X1 versus Anakin in the Eta 2 would be quite an interesting matchup. Now now I want to see a an Aces high game where everyone just brings a different version of Anakin slash Vader. So Eta 2, Delta 7, Naboo Y-Wing, Fighter. Naboo Fighter, Defender. X1 and Defender. And then if you want, throw in like just an Imperial ship with Vader crew somewhere. Give me two seconds, I'm just writing this down. <laughs> Vader Aces High. Keep an eye out, guys, future video potential <laughs> there. That does sound like fun, actually. Um, leave, leave a comment you... if you've got any other ideas for similar games. Yeah. Oddball Aces High is the other one I can think of, or Sabine is another one who has many pilots. Yeah, but those are mostly the same faction. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any that... Well, Sabine crosses faction at least twice. Three? There's a few. I think twice. Vader would be probably the most interesting. Yeah, Vader would be the most interesting because not only that, all of the ships that Vader is in have different abilities. They're, they're not the same True. abilities, which yeah. again also makes it quite fun. Um, but another devastating round there for Sam, unfortunately, going into turn five. Did get a few objective points. Got a few objective points, points yep. Yeah. So five points to 12 in your favour there, James. And while we're waiting for those dials to get set, just want to remind you guys, if you do like what we're doing here at Art of Art Gaming, you can support us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. You do get access to see some of the upcoming bits, behind the scenes stuff, and we also talk about some of the new videos that we're looking to put together. So definitely worth checking that out. The um... I don't know, Sam really tried to focus down Zori. And I, I can sort of see why, like being able to reload Proton Torps, Poe's already spent his. But, yeah. you know, the, the torpedo launchers of Poe and Zori are very dangerous. If you can keep close enough, Zori can only use her primary guns. Poe, I mean, it's still an initiative 6 8, but if you can take out Ray. That is a big gun off the table, like a consistent big gun off yeah. the table. Well, what, just, what you, who would you go for first? Well, just quickly, I want to point out that D did not bump there. Oh, that was yes. a nice bit of that. Yes, yeah. D was pixels away from touching, but did not. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I... I kind of agree. Ray is... a powerhouse. One, one Zori's unloaded the proton torpedoes. She's not the greatest. She's not very good offensively. She's, she's there just to sort of, like, help. Again, if you go in the order of shooting Poe, then Ray, then Zori, she's quite handy for that, that sort of, like, sniping sort of shot there. But I think... I think Ray is definitely the one you want to go for. I... Whenever Which I come up against... a tricky thing to do when, yeah. when Ray has the most health. Yeah, but I say that because I tend to avoid Poe. Not just because you he's... Sort of go, you know what, I'm, ne- I'm not actually going to really be able to finish him in the game. I'll just focus on everyone else. Yeah, he's very slippery. He's very fast, especially with those overdrive thrusters. Yeah, and the black um, one if he needs it. And black one, he's... He can just move so quickly. The game I played the other day, I don't even think I shot at Poe once. Um, but luckily, I was, I was in a fairly good position that Poe didn't really do much after the first couple of turns. He sort of got out of position, then struggled to get back round to me. Um, and I had a few juicier targets anyway. Um, but yeah, Poe, although he's seven points, he's, he's a tough tough opponent to take down it, yeah if you invest too much it's seven points that you're still not going to get kind of thing yeah I mean I unless you've even... got a good ace to like contract that yeah I did do a purposeful self bump here um, I knew like Zori was going to go over there and it was either yeah. a case of Ray is going to bump into who's that IGD or I can have Ray bump into Zori and be at range one of IGD and Ray was yeah. healthy enough that you know what if she took the damage from self like team bumping then I'm I'm happy with that trade off yeah and that's something that 2.5 has done is it has made it's made you want to avoid that as much as possible but you can still use it on those odd occasions where you know it is going to benefit you, you're not just straight up looking yeah. to... Yeah, they, they have designed off. that rule in a way, I feel at least, that it does counteract the, I'm just going to sit at the back here and just wait for you. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does feel really bad if you bump your ship into your own ship and it's the last damage and it goes down. You do feel terrible. Unless you're Ray and you have a dead man switch. Yeah. <laughs> Which has I mean, triggered for me, and I think it hit three ships, two enemies, and I think it also hit Poe. That was that was a weird turn. Still not the best dead man switch I've seen though. Um, that one does actually go to Connor in one of our early games, where he deliberately didn't spend a focus to dead man switch Z95 that was in the middle of five ships. Is that on the channel? That is on the channel. It's a very early game. I believe it was Connor versus Quinn. Quinn was running his Rebels and Connor was running Boba Fett with a bunch of Dead Man Switch loaded Z95s. And I just absolutely loved the the nerve of just going, the, oh, I could spend a focus and live or I could just blow myself up. And I was just like, yeah you know what that makes a highlight reel for me uh, so here i think we've got poe shooting at b. Uh, red yeah at b uh already a good shot still a good shot uh yep yeah, yep yeah, very good shot just this is sending it to try and make sure b goes down really yeah guarantee it as best as possible oh one away and the crit comes uh, out, triggers the fuel leak. I, th- I think it like brought out, yeah, another, yeah, was, I think it, it was, was like just two or something. Yeah, it, it was, it was just not nice, A regardless. Lot of and unfortunately, elusive had already been spent at that point as well, which didn't help. So, another seven points to you, which does mean for those of you that are paying attention to the board 
this is going to be the last turn. Hitting 19 points and knowing that you've got two objectives, poss- well, definitely one objective there. Yeah, I, w- I was kind of setting dials and stuff, like trying to think, okay, how am I going to catch D? And then Sam pointed that out to me. I was like, oh, all oh, right, yeah, objectives. Again, it's something that we're still getting used to. I was even writing down the, the score turn by turn, and I hadn't actually clocked the. Oh no, I, I can just just grab an objective. Yeah, and it again, I like objectives. Don't get me wrong; they are quite interesting and fun. I do sometimes miss just a straight up dog fight, but there's an objective for that. Yeah, Charles engagement. I just think it is a nice addition to the game, actually. I do like that it's, you know, it does force engagements, and also yeah. the uh, the obstacle placement has become maybe a bit more tactical as well. Like you can see the rainbow one up by Ray, yeah, like just being placed right in my way, so I yeah, can't does, just fly straight over it. Yeah, to stop you just going straight up to it, that's another powerful shot there. And have you already got the target lock? Uh, I don't. Th- I think I did, but I only needed to spend a force, really. Oh, yeah. So, um, guaranteed yeah, damage. That, again, getting that range one shot, being able to modify with dice. And, and just a pretty yeah. average pretty roll, unfortunately, for defense. Yeah, standard roll for IG there. He's not... These IGs haven't had a great... No, they didn't have the best time with their defense dice. No, I, I think it's a bit unfortunate. But, but set- also, I was throwing a lot of red dice their way, so... Yeah. I mean, if anyone wants to go back and count how many red dice you were throwing uh, and pop it in the comments, I'd be interested. But you're averaging... I, I see you're, you're averaging close to four red dice a a shot basically because you had a yeah, lot I mean, of range the, one the shots. Ideal, like opening engagement is like 12 red dice really yeah and that's enough to delete potentially two ships yes for or the IGs. Need to put a real dent in something big I mean that could potentially take out a decimator if you get the decimator or ghost if you get the right crits in there yeah the the thing it does sometimes struggle with is really elusive aces. Yeah. Because if, white... if you can't get them to spend their tokens before, like in this case, probably Ray is going to shoot last. So if they can dodge the proton torpedoes fairly comfortably, then they've still got mods to, you know, soak up the hit from Ray. Yeah. And I think another very powerful thing in this list is the initiatives. Initiative yeah. six and two initiative fives. I, I've always favoured the higher initiatives. So yeah, yeah the uh, the IGs all being initiative four, not the best for Sam. But other than the the rock incident, which we've all done, we've all done it too many other, times. That was a good game. It was. I I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I know that Sam had a good time as well. He does rue the rock and um, there we go. There's a cheeky little <laughs> flip there for uh, IG. No. It's great when it's not an actual paid for model. You don't mind mucking about with it. Um, but a good game. Re- uh, amazing to see triple IGs on the board. Not going to lie. Absolutely love that because, hey, the IGs are cool ships. And I can't wait to see them come back in, in standard. Maybe we get some new stuff for them. That'd be quite nice. But your your list. Well, you, you say it's my just... list. Um, I can't actually remember who made it. I did find it online, but I really like it, so I'm using it. It's a strong list. It's a good list, and I think Resistors have got some really cool stuff in there. So it's a faction I've seen played a lot at the local stores, so I might have to dust them off at some point. It's been a while since I've flown Resistance. But that was a cracking game in the end. Five points for Sam there on the objectives. 21 for James. Huge scoring in the actual deleting ships off the board there. So well done, buddy. Good well, effort. Thanks for you know not only having me on to commentate, but to actually play a game. 
it's yeah. good. No, it's, it's great. And like I said, if those hyperspace lanes weren't all congested yeah. and too expensive, we'd definitely be getting you down here or me coming up there and getting some games in. But yeah, it's been great to have you back on the board and on commentary as well, mate. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that game. Don't forget, TTS is still a great place to play. Um, so we will hopefully be bringing more TTS games in the future. In the meantime, don't forget, like the video, subscribe to the channel, link for the Patreon in the description below, and we will see you next time. <laughs>